Hey, what's going on, everybody? Um, man, this is this is a big milestone, guys. Two hundred episodes. Wow, this is absolutely incredible and so exciting to be here today because we are uh, celebrating two hundred episodes of Ven Icons. So we brought together all the guests. We invite everyone. We don't know who's going to come. We send an open blank invite to everybody, and it's going to be super duper exciting. And uh, we're just going to get to have some fun long here. But you know what? That intro music that we usually have, it's getting a little stale now. So we brought along Song Division, who wrote a custom song for our 200th episode. Ben, go hit it. All right, here we go. I I hope it's not too loud and doesn't explode everyone's speakers. But here we go. 200 episodes. It goes like this. episodes you guys have broke the mold we're so proud of you so we wrote you your own song you guys are killing it no wonder you're a hit when it comes to av y'all should know how to take care of it oh oh you guys are superstars oh oh you're stealing every heart so congratulations from song division 200 episodes you guys destroy the competition everyone who works with you they say the same thing too so congratulations congratulations from song division Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Ben, thank you so much. That was fantastic. We didn't even know what that was going to say. That was fantastic. Um, so, Brant also wrote a song and is uh, going to sing it now for us. Uh, Brant, uh, hit, your, hit it with your song. <laughs> Once there was a man who had a podcast. Once there was a man who, made <laughs> who loved to blab. Loved to blab. <laughs> Come on, out of nowhere. Oh, my gosh. Well, I, I will take a quick second to introduce our two uh, hosts who are joining us today, Brant Kruger and Alex Plaxen, who are joining to help uh, us figure out where we're going to take this journey for the next hour <laughs> um, as we uh, welcome as many people as possible to come on the screen. So, uh, Alex and Brant, thank you guys so much for uh, joining us uh, for 200 episodes. And um, you guys have actually been around since the beginning, uh, too. So, uh Brant, we were on episode two, and Alex has literally been our main like guy who engages with the audience since like the first episode, and you know he was the one I think uh, reason why so many people love to hang out in the chat. So, thank you guys so much. Um, I I don't have any plans after I just said that. So, um, <laughs> dear God, please take, I think there's take still the contention rinse. as to whether or not I was on episode one or not, because depending on how you number it, I think you did an episode zero. So, oh yes, I'm not that's true. Saying, so I'm is this saying. episode two hundred and one potentially? It could be. It could that's be. That's like could. a big controversy. Yeah, I think we might have to, you know, <laughs> smack down and find out. <laughs> so that's I, true. you know, it's it's great to be on the show. Uh, Long time watcher, and then I became a live tweeter, and I was actually just looking through some photos, and I found I used to take pictures of the screen, and I would tweet them out at the beginning of every episode and i was going back through some old photos from like 2016 and i i found one and i was like oh yeah i remember when i did that and then uh <laughs> and then uh you know will and brant asked me to host and uh you know it, the rest is history yeah. um but we have a lot of faces here uh who are not hosts uh but have been guests on the show some multiple times um so why don't we let them introduce themselves um, who do we want to start with? If you guys remember what episode number you're on, I'm, I have the schedule in front of me, but I'm going to do my best to remember what episode <laughs> number was we were on. Um, but if you remember what episode number it was, just feel free to shout out. Or if you remember the topic, uh, I just have so many episodes on here to go through. So Only yeah, yeah. Let, let's kick it off. Well, Ben, since you sang a song, why don't you introduce yourself, uh, who you're with and all that jazz. And how yeah, we uh, I'm, I'm Benji Harris with Song Division. Uh, and I got, first got to meet you guys uh, in IMAX, or at IMAX in, in Vegas. And uh, I believe we were your last uh, video interview of the entire conference. And so we were completely just falling over. We were so tired and our brains were mush. Uh, and so really glad to be here. Thanks for letting me come in and, and, and kick the party off with a song. Absolutely. We're so happy to have you here. Anyone else want to join in? Just feel free to, like, we no plan. Just, like, interrupt each other. John, John's ready to go. <laughs> 
I should follow Benji since we're both song division guys. And same thing, I met you guys at IMX the year before, but uh, we came in, we did that song for you and used the popular hashtag, I don't know who created it, but I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> And I think that, that that song is all on YouTube too. So we'll make sure that uh, uh, that we uh, put that in the in the show resources so you can catch that epic song as well. <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right, keep going. Get, keep, you guys keep introducing yourselves. Or... I feel like Corbin should go next. Well, yeah, Cor- I'll, Corbin's I'll ready. Go next. I have to do it. Well, first of all, congratulations, you guys. Two hundred podcasts. That's a really significant milestone. You deserve all the kudos with that. It's. Uh, I have always appreciated your passion for the industry, uh, your positive outlook. It's been a pleasure dealing with you guys over the multiple podcasts we've done together. And I couldn't be more happier to be here and uh, uh, share this day with you guys. Oh. That's so nice. <laughs> I'm going to cry on this episode, I think. <laughs> the, goal, the goal is to make Will cry on goal, this Goal, yay. <laughs> Uh, 100%. Uh, if you didn't cry with the song, I was waiting for a tear to drop. Uh, but Corbin, Corbin's been on the the show a lot. Uh, what episode was Corbin's first episode? It was one of the first, right? It, it's, it's been a year. I think it's been the third, the fourth year in review or is coming up, I think, now. So I think, Yeah. And, yeah. Cool. Let's see, December 30th, 2015 was the 2016 Event Trends episode uh, with Al Wynant and Corbin. It was episode five. Yeah. Cor- Corbin goes back to the beginning. Yeah. And, then, sure. and Jim Spellos as well. I hope he'll make it on today as well. But it's uh, um, that the, the two of us have kind of worked through with multiple episodes over that. So it's always been fun. Awesome. So this is Tiffany um, Rozier, and I feel like I'm the only female right now in here, so <laughs> make sure to mute yourselves, okay, when you're not talking. Um, but yeah, <laughs> this is Tiffany, I was like making sure that was me, um, and I was on, I don't know what episode, I was trying to look up and see, but it was actually um, the one related to when we were at ILEA Live in Minneapolis, um, and so that was pretty exciting with a lot of the chapter leaders and talking about leadership um because it was part of the leadership live session so that was a lot of fun hey there's mark i know mark i met mark and i live live so um <laughs> but yeah so i i have a photo booth business but i also have a background in education so i do some events for science technology engineering and math and just super fun and um thanks for having me on and it's always a, a great pleasure to hang out with some cool folks especially on a friday night Oh yeah, especially on a Friday. Well, shh, they think it's oh, Wednesday. They think it's Wednesday. They think it's Wednesday. On a Wednesday. Can you On a Wednesday at 5 p.m. On a Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. On a Wednesday at 5 p.m. Well, I forgot. Didn't you guys know I just got back from a trip, so I was international travel. So I'm sorry that my days are all wrong. It's Wednesday. Sorry. No, there you go. There you go. Nice for for those at, who yeah. are watching, uh, we are filming this Friday to get as many people as possible. Um, so normally we'll have some people in the chat, uh, you know, comments and stuff. Um, but yeah, today, today we're focusing on the over 200 guests we've had on the show, <laughs> which is insane. And by the way, episode 177 was uh, Tiffany for the ILEA live episode. So, uh, back in September or August of 2019 for ILEA live 2019. Yeah, so. that was fun. Absolutely. Thanks. Fantastic. Had a great time. Well, we, a special appearance is made real quick, and I think that we need to, to note her as one of our past hosts in the house right now. We're joined by Tahir Endin, one of our rock star hosts for many years. And uh, Tahir, thanks for uh, joining us and uh, uh, getting to celebrate this milestone with us and hang out with us today. Oh, wait, you might be muted. This is, you get to do live. <laughs> we, we don't have no rehearsals at all with this stuff, guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Did we ever have rehearsals? What? No, never, never. <laughs> what um, is this rehearsal of which you speak? This is true. Well, thanks for joining us to hear. I'm so excited to have you. Yay. <laughs> now, where in the world are you right now, Tahira? Because I think Tahira, more than any host on the show, uh, probably broadcasts from more countries <laughs> yeah, true. Than places than anyone else. There was a reason that it was just getting a little tricky to keep doing that. <laughs> yes, I think my, my Google timeline tells me that in the past two years, I've been in 20 countries, 72 airports, and 206 cities. Wow. 
Wow. Amazing. <laughs> so, but I'm, st I'm at home today. So we have our uh, site global conferences uh, next week in Vancouver. So Back home. deep in the throes of throwing a party for 600 of my closest friends in my hometown. I love awesome. it. To hear, do you remember what your first episode of Event Icons was? Uh, I do not because I, I was a guest long before I was a host. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you do you, do you remember? I and what's funny is that um I'm I'm still trying to see if we can get her on the to join the show right now, but it wasn't even hosted by me. Um, it was actually hosted by like one of our first ever hosts that we had. But episode twenty eight, September fourteenth, wow. two thousand sixteen, uh, and it was the Biz Dev and Events with uh, Claire, Eric, and yourself. That's so long ago. <laughs> it feels like forever ago. <laughs> wow. Insan insanity and that was hosted by laura lopez um who really wants to be yeah. here right now i want to give a shout out i'm trying to get her on by phone at least um but she's like on a train between uh to new york city right now so she's I'm like please get on we hopefully can make it so <laughs> um all right well uh tiffany mentioned mark so i think mark if you want to introduce yourself uh if you remember, and remember the that was the ilia light up so it was the first episode you were on too no imax oh. actually was my first episode. oh no was it yeah, wow. this IMAX this year. Um, and thank you guys and congratulations on your 200th episode. I'm so excited. I'm actually away running an event in Atlanta um, with MC Event Consulting, but I'm so happy to be able to pop in today. I was going to say, you look like you're in a hotel room, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is not a surprise for anyone who knows Mark that he'd be on the road right now. Absolutely. Um, and Mark will actually be making his second appearance on the show uh, later this year um as well with uh kate uh Pate, correct that is correct we will be talking about the search foundation i was very proud and happy to be able to be a new board of director for the search foundation and can't wait to educate everybody on what search does for the event in hospitality community awesome <laughs> i love it i love it all right and la last but not least joining us today T tiffany thought she was the only female here we we're joined by the amazing Michelle Brewer. Michelle, I haven't even got a chance to thank you so much for, uh, for, for uh, getting us down to San Francisco and getting to, to hang out and talk about 5G. So thank you and get to publicly thank you as well. <laughs> Welcome. I was beginning to think this is like a presidential cabinet uh, round table where <laughs> each guest is supposed to go talk about how great you guys are. And <laughs> I mean, that works for us. Whatever. I'm totally okay. Just talk yeah. shit about Will. That's the thing that we should do. <laughs> no, well, first of all, you're welcome. And thank you for helping me out. And second of all, you are great. And I love to support people who I really respect and admire. So that's why I'm here. The feeling's mutual, Michelle. Absolutely. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> like, like that's a surprise that is, if you, i do remember the one and only like mini appearance and i think tahira literally grabbed me out of the aisle at connect uh in salt lake city and said here sit down be on this podcast so talk about no preparation it was just like oh my gosh that was such a great episode though like we were like we couldn't believe we never had you on the show up until that point like we were just always like michelle hasn't been on the show yet and like we we're so excited to have you <laughs> that was uh, Michelle Jordan just, and Jim and I don't know what more I can add to those guys so <laughs> uh, I can I can fill in when they're you know sick or on a plane <laughs> and that was the episode 127 I'm rocking it today with this guy 127 live from Connect Marketplace on uh, August 23rd 2018 <sighs> Awesome. That was definitely pulling her out of the uh, aisle. It's true. Uh, actually, probably, <laughs> was probably on my way to the ladies. I pulled something. Corbin out of an aisle. It was to lie down and do a crime scene with me. Yeah. <laughs> That's so common. It's so common. If you're to here, you have to do the crime scene photo. Like it's needed. <laughs> well, and I think right, that's something that. Good. I think it's something that people don't realize also is Michelle's a perfect example is when we're at some of these conferences and doing these live shows, right? Like people think we have all this preparation. Sometimes we do, but more often than not, we see these amazing people because those, those places are great places to network and see these amazing people in the industry and true event icons. And we're like, do you have five minutes because we really want you on the show? And, and hopefully, uh, you know, eventually we ha usually have people join us for a, a full episode, but um, yeah, Michelle's a perfect example of someone who we just had to get on the show and it was a serendipitous moment uh, that we were able to have you join us. Um, you. And speaking of people joining us, uh, Lindsay, 
our fourth co-host just joined us. Yeah. There's so much rain here, y'all. It's just terrible. So I'm glad that we're here. I was like, oh, all my favorite people. It's like streaming on my Twitter feed as I sit in traffic. And I'm like, I want to go. I want to see. I want to talk. Did you hear the song? Did you get to hear the song? I did. And that's why my kids were like, Mommy, why are you smiling so big? I was like, well, it's my favorite group hanging out with the tunes. <laughs> Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, well, we're really happy to have you here for sure. I mean, yeah, again, wow, craziest. I'm not, I'm not allowed to talk at all during this episode because I just want to like awe in the fact that like, this is so exciting. I'm just looking through like all the past guests and everything like that. Um, and everyone that we've had, um, it's just been absolutely nuts. <laughs> Do all we right. know an actual number, Will, of how many guests we've had in 200 episodes? I'm going to start counting. <laughs> we're going to give it's tough Will there's five repeats, minutes to right? count. There's repeats. Uh, there's yeah, repeats. Yeah. yeah, give me two seconds. I can probably figure it out. Um, because we <laughs> luckily, like, I, I'm trying to think, like, when we start using the form to collect everybody's information, yes. and that might be a good chance to check. So let me give me two seconds. I'm gonna figure this out. Or your mm. rain man, and you can just look over the list to go. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I mean, so, it's got to be at least 400, right? Like, yeah, I mean, like about all the IMAX episodes and live episodes where we have, you know, maybe 20 guests on. You have to think it's at least 400, even with repeats. I'm looking at it right now, and at minimum 371. Yeah. Yes, oh. that we've had on the air, um, which is like insanity. <laughs> like it, it, yeah, it's crazy because yeah, the the episodes I think like the IMAXs and things like that. Like for example, like you look at the IMAX episode from 2018, and that was the we were so proud of ourselves. We're like we did. 23 people in one hour and we were so excited and then we did like the next year and we did four days, days of it <laughs> and <laughs> did like 100 people um but yeah like it's it's crazy how many people it's been and there's probably people on that's probably not included it's probably at yeah, 400 plus now at this point especially because so i'd love to happy. ask our guests that are on the show who have we not had on the show that you think we should have yeah, that's oh. a good question. And, and it's okay. If you say someone that we've already had on, it'll just show how we've covered the land pretty well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping that it's the opposite. Like, oh, we already did an episode on that. Who, do, who should we have that, yeah, you guys think that we need to have? Oh, or, Corbin, go for it. <laughs> uh, I, the number, I, I uh, have you had Michael Dominguez on? We just did, yeah. Yeah. We just did, okay. That's, yes. uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, always does an eloquent presentation about from the hotel perspective. I, I really admired his viewpoint. And, uh, I'll try to think some more then you guys. You guys <laughs> well, and you're still going to have to um, get Didier Skye, our CEO on. Yeah. Well, I was actually eyeing your speaker lineup at site for next week. And I was like, I want to borrow this one and Tahira can introduce us to this one. <laughs> and then I was kind of looking at internet stalking a little bit more about into Mark and Michelle's background. And I was like, ooh, there's a conference here that we haven't had on the show. <laughs> so I've got lists. Y'all, we can. Didn't we have did, yeah, yeah, and on the IMAX Frankfurt episodes that we did, interviews? No. no, he was supposed to, oh, didn't, oh no, we got him for Oh, maybe like, you did, yeah, at IMAX. Yeah, that's right. <sighs> okay, I gotta check, I'm gonna check and see if, it, if, we, if we did, but yeah. <laughs> So this is Tiffany, so I was just wondering, what about like Jennifer Trethewey? Has she been Ooh, on? She, the ILEA International President from Australia? She would be a great one. She would be a great one. Do you want to make an introduction? There you oh, go. Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> she might be a I got her on like, I love my it. iPhone. We had we had Sarah on the show as past pre now she's past president but oh yeah you know, with, definitely yeah, JT and yeah. Especially, you know, they got by a lot the of things time going, we're done we're gonna have all of 2020 booked basically <laughs> yeah, it's amazing it's five, we had the gaps. 200th episode like this is to help you all have us help source right because you know all the smart <laughs> people. we tricked you guys you were actually here to help us plan the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're not actually broadcasting. This is just <laughs> yeah, this service. all the fake. It's not actually live to like all the thousands like it's our of people. Team brainstorming meeting, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Do we get dinner after this? Do we get lunch? Uh, yeah, food? I got Uber <laughs> Eats coming your way right yeah! away. So what, do you, what do you look for in guests? 
Oh, that's a good question. Are they available at 5 p.m. Eastern oh, on Wednesday? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Good gracious. Don't listen to Will. <laughs> no, but most people like don't realize that we get shot down a lot by people because they're like, I can't plan oh, that specific time. Or, you know, we unfortunately lose a lot of like the like the European market because it's like 3 a.m. I would like, for example, Dan in our episode last week, he he came on the show at 3 a.m. because he's in India. Like that that's absolutely crazy. But that's that's just a funny fact that most people don't know. Is like trying wow. to schedule the 5 p.m. Eastern is tough. Um I, I I mean to Michelle's question, I think we try and look for people who are really uh change makers in the industry, people who are doing something new and exciting. Um people who've been around the industry for a long time and can really share their expertise on a specific topic, especially uh, when new things pop up or something's in the news, we definitely try and get people who can speak to that. Um, and we just actually had a call this past week that we're, we're looking at doing some, uh, some episodes that are like event icons, legends, like who are the legends of the industry, even if they're retired, we want to get on the show to share their story and, and the history of the events industry. Um, while we have them around. Yeah, and what did that was because we lost John Graham this last week. Yeah. And yeah. it was one of those people that John literally changed the way the association events world ran and was such a change maker. And so I think there's a lot of potential guests out there. And if you all listening or, or tuning in after this next week know of someone that we should be highlighting in that, please let us know, you know, tag us in social, send us in via email because we want to make sure that we're honoring those stories and having them available to us and for future generations who are coming in and thinking about the ways they can disrupt events. And we can point back and be like, yeah, well, we were doing it back when it was the real first time. That's why I like when I get Corbin <laughs> going with some of the old stories, he's like, oh no, we did that like 20 years ago. <laughs> Him and Ed, it's just like fantastic to go, oh, that's right. We're, we're just trying things and polishing what they already set out to do. All this has happened before. All this will happen again. <laughs> And if you get that reference, you're as big a nerd as I am. And what's funny is I didn't get that reference. So uh, I, don't think any, I don't think any of the people on this did. So I think uh, if you're yeah. out there in the audience and you got that rest for reference, please use hashtag event I, icon. To I want to say what I think it is, but if I'm wrong, then I'm going to be embarrassed. So I'm not going <laughs> to. I mean, at this point, I got to know too. Can you do I mean, that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess in the chat so no one has to hear me guess. Yeah, no, I think we got to leave it hanging and, and, see, if any, and see if anybody mm -hmm. can guess it uh, via socials. Uh, no, fans. Alex, that would be incorrect. Okay, so that was wrong. <laughs> so how about you, Mark? You got you got a lot of thoughts floating through your brain down there. What are you thinking? Um, I want that I know. Have you guys ever had um, Erica Lomar on the show? I don't think so. Sounds like I'd love to get her on the show for you guys. Ooh, I like it. I like it. What's great too is you guys could literally say anybody and we'll say yes right now. So it's a great way to if anyone you want to try to get on the show. But, <laughs> We I should probably not. I was like, yeah, no absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, <laughs> like, oh, no, no, we no. We were teasing the 2020 yeah. and we were talking about all the guests we wanted to have on. And we were like, the Olympics, Dreamforce, um, Disney. And then all of a sudden, these other speakers started coming up and saying, well, I did that and we helped do this. And so it's actually when you put it out there into the universe. So this is that big, hairy, audacious goal. So I guess this is that time again to ask any of our current guests on the show. Do you know somebody who organizes the Macy's Day Parade? Because if so, Will would really... <laughs> I've actually worked on I, it. I know who it is, and I know exactly. Amy Kuehl, I am literally begging you, come on the show, answer my emails. I have your email address. I've been emailing you for like four years, 200 episodes. Come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lindsay, I actually have a meeting with the VP of Disney next week, and... Um, I, I want to make your Disney dream come true. So. I want you to make my, no, this is, this is Caitlin Coulson's Disney dream, but if you can and do that, you know, I'm there. It's the most magical place on so, Earth. So this is my plan is I will be there in April and I think we should go live from Disney. So. Oh my God. And it's my birthday month. Let's do it. I'm <laughs> in. My birthday month too. Let's go it's to my, too, so yeah, let's do it. It's my seven let's, months I'll away birthday, birthday anniversary. <laughs> Well, I was going to say Scott Ostrom from ILEA Orlando. He actually works mm. for Disney. Ooh. So um, he actually did a, because, you know, there's a few little things with Disney. You can't always, like, you know, tell everything and all that stuff. So there's a little tricks Mouth and stuff. To keep but, a secret. but Scott's great. He's really, really great. He traveled to Hampton Roads, Virginia, and 
kind of talked about a little bit of coolness, but you know, can't give away the secrets, but he's a great one. I can always connect you all with. So I have a question and it's, it's not so much who would be on the show, but like, what's a topic we haven't discussed that you think we need to discuss? Ooh, man. Okay. These are so... I have a well, since I've listened to all 199 episodes. Um... <laughs> and technically you're listening to the 200th too. You're like literally listening to it as it's happening. So <laughs> I'm like, huh, let me see. I'd probably say something that you guys would say like, oh, I've already like heard that one. No, that's kind of fun though for us because like then we're like, yes, we like covered the topic they wanted to do. Um, we, well, how about do this one? Part twos, have part you... threes. Have you done anything related to like people who play event planners on like in movies and TV and had any of them on there? <laughs> That's because, like, such a great topic. It, like, no, like, but really I would acting. really like, I would like to thank the good people of uh, Lifetime because my father recently watched a Christmas Lifetime movie about <laughs> event planning and went, oh, right? oh that's what you do for a living. And I'm yeah. like, yeah, like, it's been 20 years in the industry. Man. So we're getting just, I was Are we trying to get really... J-Lo on the show? That's what I was going to say, J-Lo. <laughs> I know. The wedding planner. Funny. I was like sitting here Googling like <laughs> people who have played party planner modes. Mold, I keep hearing to hear modes. his mouth move. And so I'm like, I don't know if she's like really shooting our, our ideas down or being like, I've already got these three contacts. Fools, just contact me. So here is muted. Okay. How about this? How about bringing on the spouses and or partners of Will and Brant and Alex and, uh, and all the other hosts to talk about you guys? And the life uh -huh. you lead, and sort of the background information. Yeah, have a girlfriend before you have a spouse. Um, so <laughs> let me work on that a little bit more and have some time. <laughs> Will's cats can talk about it. Yeah, I got the cats. They're ready to go. They're very the longest relationship. Should be best friends. Maybe it should be your ex girlfriends, Never. Will. <laughs> <laughs> That might be some enlightening. So, uh, that is something I would totally watch. I am in. And for some of you, your mom or your dad, maybe grandma, grandpa. You know, I like it. I well, it's it's funny because then they'll all talk about how it's so annoying at two p.m. every Wednesday. I would tell them they can't watch movies or TV or anything, and then that's why I got a second bedroom, so <laughs> <laughs> so I could record a bad cause in the middle of the day. <laughs> So or what cool. about like any behind the scenes kind of um, like if we know people who are actors or actresses and you know how they have the big red carpet stuff like that's a big event like what's it really like behind like on the red carpet like when the cameras aren't on and when people know that they're not being recorded and everything like just kind of like what's it like. I mean, have you done anything like that with people? No, but Elaine Liu from Laney Gossip, she works with uh, Canadian eTalk. If you're listening out there in the ether, yes, please. Can we talk to you and your team with Danielle Graham? Because your Golden Globes coverage and every time you talk about the Oscars tilting stages, I want to be best friends. So just throwing that out there. If anybody from our Canada listeners, y'all are going to be at Go West next week and bless your hearts because Brent Taylor said it was negative 35 or something like that. Um, well, I, I would really, really like to have your event planners come and, and share with us the secrets. See, I just think about that. Like I have a friend, her name's Carla Mosley. She acts, she's on the Bold and the Beautiful right now. But, you know, just thinking about different things that like they experience kind of on that other side of it. Um, so, I, I mean, I think it'd be kind of interesting to know because those are such big events. So, like you're saying, to kind of know that behind the scenes, like what really kind of goes on and because we only see that one angle, right? Like, oh, look at them. They're here and they're smiling and they're 10 seconds of answering that question and then what yeah, happens? Like, how do you put a lavalier microphone down a sequin gown? Right. Go from right. the bottom <laughs> up the hem up. The, the correct answer is you let the let yeah. her do it because <laughs> <laughs> I'm an audio technician and I would say let her do it. <laughs> we have another person Jeff? joining us. Oh my God, Jeff Frank is in the house. Jeff, how are we? <laughs> oh my gosh, Jeff, introduce yourself. What episode you were on, and uh, if and you know, if I can, I can look it up. Be no math. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do not remember the episode number, but it was an episode about um, managing client expectations. Mm -hmm. And so it, it was, was episode was episode 114 on May 16th, 2018. And Brant, like yeah, Brant, Brant hosted that one. Yeah, exactly. Just like you said. <laughs> 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 we'll set that expectation. <laughs> yeah. so awesome. How's it going, everyone? 
We're doing good. We're just, uh, we're hanging out talking about what would be the one episode. Jeff, you're like an also, what's interesting is you're also an extremely active listener of the podcast as well. In addition to being one of our past guests, um, what sort of topic, I, I haven't asked you this for probably a year, so I want to know the answer is what topic do you think that we should cover? What's some, someone you, you would want to see on the show that you have? That well, have I did tune in the other day, uh, the MC um, episode, which is probably not something I would have ever thought about uh, an episode of, but you know what? I got sucked in and I thought it was really, really valuable. So for me, I think sometimes those topics that maybe are not so obvious uh, tend to be more um, revealing, interesting, valuable two-way conversation. Um, I think for me, there's so much changing in the food space. Um, Mm -hmm. I was going to suggest food trucks and kind of the ebbs and flows of food truck. Are people Mm -hmm. still doing food trucks? What kind of deals are they striking with food trucks? Um, I don't think we've had a food truck owner on the show, have we? Yeah, like food truck management, like it sounds like an awesome topic. There's also events that are literally just food trucks come together and people go and eat there. Yeah, Off the Grid here in San Francisco is a massive entity that does just that. Uh, Movable Feast is another one here in Silicon Valley, but you know, you can broaden that subject and just make it about catering in general. I mean, that's an evergreen topic and one that I feel is changing all the time, but is super relevant. Love it. I like it. And then, you know, cocktails, drinks, you know, I don't know, marijuana, if that's too sensitive of a area. We actually have an episode coming up. Coming up. Marijuana. That is cannabis later this year and i believe it is the episode uh in april uh right before i think it's april 15th, <laughs> april 15th. <laughs> i can't remember or, or i can't remember which day the, the week after or... it is incredibly close to the 420 yes yeah. yes it is and what's ironic is we didn't try it on it's four, was not it's on four <laughs> as 422 is when it is um but it was not intentional and we just happened to be the date that we next was available when we picked that topic and we're like and well, Wingstop or any of the other amazing fried chicken places, if you're out there and you're looking for sponsorship to help us go viral, I'm not kidding. I would love to because I love your social media campaigns and I feel there's real synergy there. Um, yeah, for, for that episode specifically. Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? Popeyes. 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 What the heck? Chick-fil-A. You guys are crazy. See you guys later. Are you talking oh, about Bojang sandwich? Just kidding. Uh, Bojang. I, haven't had, I haven't had it yet. That's why. Yeah. I'm all Texas about it. I'm like, can we have some canes? Right. Oh, no. Okay, so I have a question. Okay. So what's the, the age of the youngest guest you've had on? Hmm. Is Will the youngest? When Will was to episode <laughs> one, Will was, Will was 12 years old. <laughs> so the reason I ask is like, you know, what about some of these like amazing young people like that are like, some of them are middle school, high school age kids doing some amazing events or like I saw on Instagram this kid that was on like um, TLC, like that baking show or whatever. And his name, like he has like Michael's desserts. He's actually in DC, Alex. And apparently like for every cupcake that like people like order, he delivers one to people homeless in DC. And I was just thinking about like, you know, things that related to the, our young, young up and coming people who are doing things at such a young age, but just kind of wonder about throwing that out. What also, what about people with different abilities? You know, like superheroes? Um, <laughs> the f- Barry Allen? <laughs> well, oh, like the guy, like I knew you were talking about the guy, there's a guy, a gentleman who um, doesn't have a site and he does an event. Um, a lot of, like, for example, the Ilea chapters have used him and he does an event like called Dining in the Dark. Ooh. I heard like great yeah. reviews about that event. That would be super interesting. And he's completely visually impaired, completely like 100% and just does this amazing program I heard. Ooh. I can get his name if you guys need a. Could do I, the like podcast in the dark. I feel like Tiffany, you've just like helped yourself into our whole booking agent. Um, I know Tiffany's I know. our new booking agent <laughs> for Event Icon. I have this like creativity. That's why I do stuff on creating collaborative partnerships. Like, I know. Yeah. I just I'm loving it. I'm like writing all them down. <laughs> Come to Austin next month. I'll be there next week. I, I live oh. in Dallas. No, I'm oh, not do you there. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll have to like message you. I'll be in Austin. I was gonna really. say we like, got we got yeah. working out there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll t- I'll message you. 
So I hate to do it, but I actually have to run. So, but I wanted to make sure that I was on for this episode. I wasn't even supposed to be on this week (laughs) because of my current work schedule, but I'm glad I was able to work it out so that I was able to at least stop by for a little bit. Will, congratulations, 200 episodes. Co-hosts Alex, Lindsay, former co-host to here, guests. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it because obviously we couldn't do it at all uh, without you. I, say, I always say it on the other podcast that if nobody's listening and nobody else is on, it's just a phone call between me and Will. So um, it's definitely much more fun to have you all on it. So uh, I just had to have to run though, unfortunately. So congrats, 200 episodes. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Thanks, Brad. Brad. Thank you. <laughs> yep. I'm liking so, you guys asking us questions. This is yeah, corporate. Fun. I do have a question. Yeah. Of all these 200 episodes, what was the craziest or most unexpected one that you? Drafted? The scuba mask. The scuba I mask. Knew he was gonna <laughs> say that. I knew he was no, no, no. I, that's just like the running joke. I, I have to say, you got you guys probably better answers than that. But the scuba mask is still pretty high up there, um, in terms of the weirdest things that have happened in the show. So, someone who's wearing a scuba mask. What? What? <laughs> so right, you have to share the story. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I guess we haven't talked about it in a long time, but um, really early on in the show, I got to find out the episode number. We um, we would always ask the que- the last two questions are always, "What's your one tip?" and "What resources do you have to share?" So we do the one tip. Super. Juicy. What's great is I wasn't even here for this, but hearing I think it was Laura's reaction to when this happened was just fantastic in Slack. Um, but basically, he said, "Okay, so what resources do you have?" And most people are like, "I love Seth Godin's new blog. I love this new gadget. I love my new iPad. Whatever it may be." Right? Um, gosh, I'll find the gentleman's name real quick uh, at, at at some point. But uh, we said, "Okay, oh yeah, here we go." It was the event. It, ironically, it was the event engagement episode, episode seventeen, June twenty second, two thousand sixteen. Uh, and it was Heiner Kalperman. I think I said his name correctly. Um, and we said, hey, and what's great is John Federico, who, by the way, started the Event Tech podcast that Brant and I now run, which is just an even weirder coincidence, um, was on that episode. But we go, okay, so grab your, you know, your favorite resources. And he goes, one second. I'll be right back. And Heiner goes, walks off. And <laughs> this is all on film. You can watch this episode. It's still online. Um, and he goes, I'll be right back. And we're like, okay, he's going to grab like some notebook or something. And he just grabs a scuba mask and he says, I just got this new scuba mask and it's like incredible. It allows me to do all this X, Y, Z and crazy stuff. And it was like so far left field, Laura had no idea what to say. And she's just like, cool. And John Federico's reaction is fantastic as well. So great episode. But like, I mean, it's become such an iconic event icons moment that like, Whenever we say, hey, what are your resources you have? It could be a book, a blog, a scuba mask. And that's uh, the story of how that started back on episode 17. Will, Will is the only one who says the scuba mask. He, he's pretty. Because <laughs> I was the only one around. The first time it. I've and, ever heard this story. Yeah. But really? Okay. And, and I apologize. Now, it wasn't Laura that was on hosting. It was Sean, uh, Sean Holiday, uh, and who hopefully maybe can still join us today. Um, but yeah, Sean, Sean's reaction was the one that was crazy. So uh, if you get a chance, it's pretty <laughs> fantastic. I'm trying to think of anything kind of wild. The live episodes are always really interesting because you have these people. I mean, you th- I think back to IMAX Frankfurt and I, we had some people dressed as astronauts come on. <laughs> like there's just some crazy stuff that happens at the trade shows and uh, we also had a guest on who was doing live tattooing on the show floor. Like those, those episodes are really fun to watch just to hear not only from experts who are there and, and event icons, but uh, to he- see and hear, you know, and get a taste of what's going on at the show is always fun. And when you guys are doing those live shows, you know, the, when you the live tattooing, the best because people, when, People are spending $1,000 each to get a tattoo with $75,000 then going to breast cancer research from that live tattooing at Connect. Like, that was phenomenal. Yeah. Those are stories that make a difference. Absolutely. And we didn't even know we were going to have him on the show. It was one of those things, like, we always do our research and find out who's going to be there and kind of mark the ones that we know we're definitely going to ask but you know schedules are what they are because it's a trade show right you've got other responsibilities other than coming on the icons and we got so lucky the tattooist actually came back from an engagement to share his story because he felt so passionate about it and the fact that he was you know doing that and i think connect ended up raising what seventy-five, eighty-five thousand dollars something like that from that engagement 
Yeah. Now, Jeff, you were, you were asking a question about the live shows. Yeah, I was going to say from a booking perspective, when you guys are doing a live show like that, what's the balance of trying to book guests in advance versus the spontaneity of walk by, <laughs> et cetera? Talk a little bit about scripting those live shows. So we kind of come up with topics like with IMAX because we kind of know how their days go. The speakers tend to come in off the travel, right? So like some days Julius is only going to be there one day. We know we're going to get him for the first day of the show. And so we kind of do it for a three day show. And then we say, we know we want this guest, this guest, and this guest, because it's going to fit in with our women's in events. It's going to fit in with diversity inclusion. It's going to fit into really cool stuff that you should be knowing about. And usually I think we get about 50% of people beforehand who respond to the emails and be like, absolutely, we're going to come. And we kind of tentatively <clears throat> pencil them in. And then a lot of it is just like behind the scenes going, okay, well, they can't make it at this time. Let's plug them in here and see where it comes in. Uh, for this, the smaller ones where like we do connect and then uh, recently at PCMA, a lot of that we go and we talk to our friends before we get there. Like Angie, we talked to her a few weeks before and said, hey, you're going to be at PCMA. We realized we haven't had you on the show. Let's come in and get your perspective to share what it's like from that. And she was booked out much like we book normal guests. So it's about 50% actual planning, 50% absolute luck. I mean, wouldn't you agree, Alex and Will? Yeah, I think it also comes down to how much we're working with the actual um the planners of the event, right? If we, if we can get a list of, for example, emails of all the speakers, right? We're going to make sure that we try and get the, the best speakers who we can and the most speakers uh, on the show to talk about what they're talking about at the show. Um, and so usually we're able to work with them and get kind of a list. Um, otherwise it, it's more research that we have to do, um, which, works too um we'll go on the event website look in the app see who's around um but yeah i'd say it's probably about 50 50 um sometimes we're just so inspired because we're walking the trade show floor also and and we see someone who either we didn't know was going to be there um or, or um we see someone at a booth who's doing something amazing that we're like we have to have you on the show um so it, it, it's really, I think, a 50-50. Uh, what, what would you say, Will? Because Will actually did the first uh, live show from IMAX. That was the first time I was actually on the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, how did you do it back then? Uh, yeah, we were really organized. I think we we're actually more organized than we are now, um, it, which is crazy because it was just like, I was, it was uh, Laura, Sean, and I, but we, I knew we wanted to do the IMAX episode. And what I think I did is somehow I start knowing people at that point. How? I don't know. You guys are just all such incredible people. I don't know how I at all got started getting connected with you guys, but we reached out and I create a Calendly link, like where you get to choose the slots. And I think I made it so everyone could book a, like a five minute slot. And then once someone, it all filled up, I basically like reopened the slot so more people could go. And essentially what happened is like people just naturally kind of got grouped together and then I just picked topics for like, for example, I think like when, um, for example, uh, Aaron Kaufman and Mike McAllen were on the show. I was just like, oh, okay, I'm gonna, I had a topic in mind. And I just made it up. And basically what happened is we set up all the calendar. The calendar invites got sent out. Sean stood outside of it. I think Laura was not there. She was like remotely managing it. And um, they would walk up. Sean would like be like, oh, hey, okay, you're this person. I had, and he had the list of everybody when they were supposed to go. And then he'd be like, okay, good. And I just had a timer. And I knew like every five, six minutes, whatever it was, I had to switch out. And they would just, boom, they get in. And you watch that episode. It's just literally chaos um, in some ways that I had to just like, you know, vamp as they were coming on and then sit down and then be like, okay, now I have to remember everything about you and who you are and why we invited you to be on the show and then start a topic. And then Mike McGowan and Aaron Kaufman start trolling me and I was not at all prepared for oh it at God. all. I could totally um, see Mike doing that. I can't wait to go back and rewatch that. Episode. Yeah. If you get a chance to watch that episode, that's how you know that Will was not prepared in any sort of way. That was episode 33. And yeah, Aaron, Aaron and Mike, I think it was like the third ep the interview or something like that. They just start asking me really weird questions. Um, and I, I don't know how to handle it because I think at that point I didn't know Aaron and Mike really, really well. Um, I guess I knew them kind of well, um, but I was, was like, okay, maybe they're like just joking. We'll get into the interview. No, they just like took over the interview and just start asking me questions and leading the whole conversation. And then before I know, like I just started going with it and it was, uh, absolutely crazy. 
Um, that's that was one of the weirdest episodes we did but yeah it was just one of those things where you just start bringing in um thankfully we had people who took it seriously like alex and actually alex and xander did an interview about like the young people in the industry and uh that was le- legit so i appreciate you guys so much but um yeah we just kind of like did it as we went along um i think you yeah. brought up an important point there will like the strength of personal relationships that's one of the things i've always just adored about tahira because she literally knows the coolest the most informative people and it just it's kind of like with tiffany coming up with this bam bam ideas you know when we we found ourselves with a few openings to hear it be like oh well this person's walking down the hallway their personal friend and they talk about this and it's true to form it would just be amazing and be able to come into it but those personal relationship whether it's to hear facilitating it or someone else that we were able to bring in through one of the host relationships i think it it talks to the strength of the industry that we really have some incredible subject matter experts on the floor and that somebody knows somebody and they're willing to share that knowledge even if it's in a five to ten minute snippet totally and i think what's really interesting also about um and we have a few of our guests uh who are are heading off uh thank you tiffany thank you corbin uh for joining us uh we also have some people uh watching the live stream because we are live streaming this even though uh, we will be putting the recording online on Wednesday. Um, so to everyone watching live, hello. Uh, thank you for joining us for our 200th episode. It's very exciting. Can we give some of those people um, shout outs? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. And, and I, uh, before, I need to sign off as well, but I want to say congratulations. That's a great uh, milestone and uh, wish you the best. And um, we will uh, see you sometime soon. The podcast is coming to you. We're not worthy of you guys. Thank you guys. Take care. Take care. Bye. I love it. Um, yeah, sh- I, I, really quick, I just want to give some shout outs to everyone who's watching so far. I'm going to try to get a couple of them in real quick and we'll cut definitely some more by the end. But Drew Bennett, um, Katie Hill, who's a team endless. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, Terrence Coffey, Caitlin Mc. I'm so sorry if I'm sorry your name. Mahogany Jones for joining us in the house, past uh, guest as well. Uh, Lauren Gellard um, and Sabrina Caladira. Um, I'm so sorry, guys. I'm totally slaughtering your names. I but... should not have let Will say the names. I yes, yes. <laughs> um, but well, if you are watching this live right now, leave us a comment or react to the post. And we'll give you a shout out as well. So thank you to the live audience as well, because who with this wouldn't be possible. But um, yeah, what I was saying before was that um, before our guests had to leave was it's it's very surprising, I think, to a lot of people, uh, particularly those who are listeners and watchers, um, that Will will admit that he knows so few people. <laughs> we'll bring up a name of someone who's like in a huge event icon and Will will just be like, should I know who that person is? <laughs> And it's 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 really entertaining for me. Uh, in, in it's particular. entertaining me for me for when we go to live events and yes. lots of people come up to him. Like Brent and I have made a party trick out of it because <laughs> watch Will squirm. <laughs> yeah, as, like, no, random he's people true. come to like, <laughs> They're like, "Oh my God, Will! It's so good to see you." And Will's like, "You too! You're wearing a name badge. Oh, thank God!" And like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's interesting, and I think that speaks to what the show is about because Will tell. Uh, Tell everyone why you kind of started the show. Uh, for those who don't know, I know we we usually talk about this on our anniversary episodes, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, so it was uh, my desire to be on Blab, which was like a social media platform, and um, a couple of people had been telling me about it, and they're like, "It's the future," and I was like, "I don't know." I always heard that about you know. TikTok. Um, and so uh, anyways, I was like, okay. And I finally was like, you know what? This sounds kind of cool. I want to play around with it. I was like, oh. I went on and someone actually invited me on the show and it was two part. I was like an entrepreneurship lab. Someone invited me on. And then Mike McGowan and I recorded my, my episode on his podcast on Blab. And I was like, this is really cool. I want to play with this. It's like, maybe I should start a show. And I was like, you know what? This would also be a good reason to start learning meeting people in the events industry that I don't have access to. Um, and I didn't know anybody at that time. Um, and yeah, essentially I just started it up and I remember we only had like three episodes planned. We had the, the first episode with Dan and then the AV episode next. Cause that was an obvious one. And then the event tech stuff. Cause we were like naturally event tech stuff. And then like from there we were just like scrambling to like find topics and we're like, we should do a trends episode. Corbin ball. 
Ellen, you're like, we got to get you on. And then we just like, just started going. In fact, um, the sixth, the eighth episode, that 4k streaming on South by Southwest at Dusty, uh, Nicholas and John, who I work with like on a daily basis. Now we didn't have that episode scheduled because Midori is the one who made the introduction after she was on the show. Um, so it was just crazy how it all ended up unfolding on here, but it was just like my chance to get to know people. And I mean, just getting to hang out with you guys right now shows like that, the power when you just bring people together. And I, my, one of my favorite things ever is two people that we knew would be good for a topic, but don't know each other, bring them on. And the guy on the show so go, so nice to meet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you call it transition. Is like, that's it kind of speaks to the legacy of the show, right? Like in 200 episodes, people who did not know each other, who we've been able to bring together on the show, who had then, you know, formed bonds and uh, worked together and um, done other stuff together. Um, I, I think it, it's really a powerful networking tool, not just for Will uh, <laughs> and uh, the rest of the hosts, but also for our guests. Um, you know, usually we'll find a topic and, and, uh, that we really want to talk about. And we'll try and find people from, with different perspectives who may not know each other. Um, like the MC episode from last week, um, both of them did not know each other. And afterwards they're like, we have to work together, right? So it's- We're best friends. Right. And, um, you know, for me, uh, I, I know Mark works a lot with uh, Biz Bash and David Adler. For me, I knew who David was. Uh, you know, I, I was very familiar with Biz Bash, but really my first- real connection with him was live tweeting an episode he did and he's like you've got the fastest fingers on twitter this is amazing and then he had me on his podcast and uh, the rest is history we're good friends now um but it, it really does speak to the legacy of the show and, and just how you connect people to each other heck yeah well i we got have a couple question of... yeah yeah go for it jeff sorry real quick so after 200 episodes any quick memories about a show that maybe you went into where expectations were a little bit lower, maybe it wasn't quite as sexy of a topic as another, but you walked out of that going, wow, I was really blown away and it was relevant and interesting. And I'll say for me first, not to pick on furniture, but the furniture episode was a little bit like, all right, you know, it's furniture. Uh, <laughs> but I walked out of it going, oh, that was actually pretty interesting. What about for you guys? Ooh. Tahira, I know, we, I know we, mine, we, we, uh, you've know. been hanging out in the background for a bit. I want to let Tahira answer that one. The ones that turned out to be interesting? That kind yeah. of a question? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. No offense, <laughs> by the way, no offense to anybody for this one. No, no, no. Yeah. I, think, um, I think the ones that, you know, like event safety, you know, where you think, oh, safety, uh, I'll have to talk about that again. But then like off the charts, right? So... You know, so where there's things like that, where there's just so much learning. Um, I love those, you know, and the same, you know, with sponsorship, because you think, oh, you do a sponsorship every day, you know, but then you talk to somebody like Peter and it's just like, what? So, you know, it's a really great way of looking at things. And so I always love those ones. I like it. I like it. Alex, you got yours ready to go? The topics that are everyday topics made better. Um, mine was one that it wasn't necessarily something that I had low expectations for. It was just something I knew so little about and was dying to know more. I was like, I really hope this is good. And that was the um, eSports episode, the first eSports episode that we had. Um, you know, it was something that I hadn't heard talked about a lot in the industry, but I knew it was kind of blowing up. Um, but I knew nothing about the guests at all. I'm like, all right, uh, I trust that whoever is on here is actually an expert in this. <laughs> and it blew me away. Uh, I was like on the edge of my seat, like, tell me more, tell me more. Why is the hour over? Um, and we did. We that did. Was, second that was episode. the perfect example of they went on to speak together at the um, event tech marketers. Right. So and they had never met before. And right. now they're still doing work together. So, yeah, those are the kinds of things where you're just like, what? It's the best. Yeah, how about you, Lindsay? I have to agree with Tahira on that one. Like, when we did the alcohol safety episode, there were things there, like, that's something that we're always pretty conscious of as an agency, especially one that's got so many women in it, because we always try to have that safety book with it and running citywide alcohol. Let me pull my my people up here. Alcohol is always something you want to do it, especially with the trends changing. But that one, and then I, the one that with had Kiki and Glenn talking about keeping it weird and keeping it awesome because it was such a big topic, and 
we really dug into some things like around the daybreaker event and the way you would do event design for different ways that different organizations are trying things around risk. And so it really, we didn't necessarily have a game plan and Brant and I just kind of watched as Kiki and Glenn took it in these directions where we could never have drove it and it ended up being such a rich episode. So I like those ones where even though we have the grains of an idea, we don't necessarily have a roadmap and watching and seeing where they go because so many of the brains we bring on are just so smart and the questions we ask can be restrictive. For sure. How about, about Will? You? Oh, God. I was, I'm really hoping I'd find one by now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, like, I don't know. It's, it was tough. Like, I don't know if I had, like, one that was like, whoa, like, this is way better than, like, I thought it was going to be. Sometimes maybe because I just, like, get, I get really excited about topics. Um, it definitely when people all of a sudden, like, I've had a bunch of episodes. The ones that blow me away in general are the ones where, like, we ask one question and, like, 30 minutes go by. And like we haven't even had a chance to ask them a question because they're firing back at each other, expanding on each other, um, you know, things like that. And like they're asking each other questions. And sometimes like we've had it where we've gotten done with shows and we're like, we didn't even need to be there as hosts. Like we, they basically <laughs> could have done this themselves. Um, ironically, it's usually the ones where the people are hosts as well. Um, but like, for example, I remember when uh, Dan interviewed me for the first episode. Um, he actually like, so I was supposed to interview him. But he decided to flip it and start introducing me or interviewing me. And I was like, oh, I wasn't even prepared for that at all. I wrote like all these questions and had all these ideas and I was not prepared at all. Um, um, you know, as far as if I had picked one, that was way better. You know, honestly, the the IMAX episode like we talked about, that was way better than I thought it was going to go. I just had no, I had my laptop and a bunch of USB mics and I was like, was figure this out and it ended up being really fun and cool and i remember afterwards everyone's like that was my favorite episode you know at that that year um and i think that ended up being much more surprising so sometimes the ones that we're most afraid of that are gonna bomb or things aren't gonna go well sometimes they end up being the most exciting ones too so i don't know the live episodes are always my favorite just because the energy is so high and it's not to say that our ones that we do every wednesday live aren't high but there's just generally more I don't know the electricity of being on site mm -hmm. I find that we have some of the most magical conversations and connections especially because we get to look our guests in the eye and that's mm -hmm. not something that happens when we're on the video conferences together well it helps too like we have all the fancy cameras and the lights and everyone's like oh my god I'm so nervous like what are we what's gonna happen right now and then like we're just like all right and and then we'll be like okay we're like one minute out and everyone's like oh god. and like just the energy, yeah. It is like you said. fun. I love the energy. Um, wow. All right. Well, we're getting close to the hour mark. Are yeah. We gonna so I have ask, one question. What's the resource? Oh, go ahead, Mark. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so what is one tip for event planners um, that you would give? <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I hate you right now. <laughs> Tahira, I feel like that's your exit note. Are you going to give us the one tip? What is your one tip? Because if it's the package yeah. list you threw down in Slack... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like that. My one tip, I don't know, I don't have just one. I feel like just um, stay curious. Hmm. You know, it's just stay curious. You just never know when you're gonna have something amazing happen because you asked a question. You're more like Lindsay. Yes. Ask for what you want, get it done. <laughs> said, uh, my, my one tip is uh, listen to event icons. Good job. You I, did it already. I, Fantastic. I, I Look knew at you. Will was going to do that. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Check out Event Icons or tell all your friends about Event Icons. And uh, that's uh, how this show will just continue to do awesome topics. Um, also, uh, this is a random plug, but feel free to hit us up um, and email us. I mean, we seem scary and frightening, but just as evident by this show, we got topics thrown at us. We're going to do them. We want to make it happen. So send us your topic ideas. We want to hear from you guys. So got a tip Lindsay you look ready I don't know I was like sitting there I was like what's your tip I really and truthfully what just went on in my brain there is like I need to make a note to call Mark in two weeks to see how his meeting with Disney goes <laughs> true story y'all <laughs> uh I love that Mark asked us that because we never get asked that uh we we always uh are the ones oh, wait, I thought we were being sarcastic I like was I have a real tip <laughs> no <laughs> like a real tip I actually plan events for a living guys like come on <laughs> Um, no, I think my tip, um, you know, when I started this 
gosh, back in 2015, back when I was first watching this, I wasn't even really a speaker back then. And people ask me all the time, uh, event planners and event professionals, you know, how did you become a speaker? And I'm, I'm curious, I want to share my knowledge. I, I, I'm curious about speaking. Um, you know, how did, how did you do it? And I'm like, apply. Like so many people, I ask them, have you ever applied to speak? Um, there's so much knowledge. And I think it's one of the things that I love so much about this show is that we bring on event icons that no one realizes are event icons who really do have this amazing well of knowledge um, to be shared. Um, so my tip would be if you have, you know, knowledge and information don't be afraid to share it get out there um share with the world because it it, it makes our industry better when uh that knowledge is being shared and i guess that's a good one to lead into mine because we're coming up on the year anniversary of when i actually formally met these guys and Ooh. we began to start our crazy adventure together and so it's you know even if you do apply and you've been kind of doing some of that but you're you're not sure how to go to the next level or to make those connections because sometimes it's hard to work up the courage to say, I really want to do that and I need help to do it because most of us as event planners, we don't like to ask for help when it's personal. We like to ask to make the client happy, right? Um, and to make the event fantastic and just reach out and say, hey, I have this great idea and I think we'd be great together and I'm going to submarine you at your trade show booth while we're standing next to each other until you say yes. True, true, true story. True, true story. story. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we should start to wrap this one up. Um, thank you, um, you, everyone, one of our guests for joining us and literally we just said, hey, come join if you can. So these guys literally just took time out of their Friday evenings and afternoons to join us, some of which are on site at events, which is just awesome. I love hearing that sort of thing. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you to our past hosts. And the ones that are sitting right in front of me, thank you guys so much. And uh, for the ones who didn't get a chance to join, I think we're going to have to figure out, we keep saying we're going to bring all the hosts back together, but maybe we'll just do a host episode um, one of these times and then um, let Jeff come and ask us all these really hard questions, apparently. <laughs> um, no, and, uh, uh, yeah, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, we um, want Jeff and Mike McAllen so I can watch the trolling and we oh, can have the good questions. Yeah, they get trolling mixed with good questions. That's the perfect balance. That's basically the event icons right at that point. But uh, thank you guys, everyone. Thank you to the listeners and the viewers you guys are seriously so fantastic i honestly people uh i i never thought 200 episodes would have been possible i remember three months in or two months in whatever it was we didn't even know if we we're gonna do this be able to do this every week live and my god 200 episodes later every week except for christmas um we have done an episode basically <laughs> so um thank you to every single one of you for watching you guys are the reason we do this you guys are the ones who give us a feedback and we just appreciate you guys so much um so thank you, everyone, for making this happen. Uh, here's to the next time we all see each other, which will probably be 300 episodes, 400 episodes, and beyond. Who knows? Maybe one like day we'll hit that big 1,000. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's going to fly on by. So thank you, everybody, for uh, joining for Event Icons. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Lindsay, for helping host. Thank you, Mark and Jeff, for staying to the very end. Thank you, everybody. Uh, and we're, uh, we're going we're to drop the mic and get out of here to 200 Congrats, more episodes. Guys. Congrats, everybody. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of Hashtag Event Icons. To catch all the bonus content, resources mentioned, and an invite to our Facebook and LinkedIn groups, head to www.event-icons.com. Also, let us know what you thought about this week's episode. Share your biggest takeaway. Just tag your post with Hashtag Event Icons. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern right here on Hashtag Event Icons. Cons.